Hello everybody, Brendan from c21teaching.com.au here. In today's Flip to Teach professional learning video, we're going to be going through some of the features of OneNote. In the previous video, I showed you how to access and open a new notebook. This time, we're going to be going through the features. You can see here I've got my blank uh, notebook open. This is the one that I created in the previous video for stage three. And we're going to go through some of the basic features. We'll start at the top and we'll work our way down. Top left hand corner we have of course the tile icon. This allows us to quickly access any of the other apps within Office 365. That is the same as in any of the other Office 365 apps. We've got our settings there. I can click on that and open up my settings. The title of the notebook is in the top middle of the page. Over here we have the share button. Clicking on that allows me to share the notebook with other teachers, other students, uh, to collaborate. I can get a link to share with people. I can invite specific people. I can uh, edit permissions for people who have access to it. And I can very quickly and easily see who the notebook is shared with. And that's just my name. The next section, this is where our ribbon is. So you would be used to uh, Microsoft Office, the ribbon system. So we have on the, first of all, on the left-hand side, file. This brings up actually a uh, an indented menu. This is where we get info about the notebook. This button here actually allows me to edit the notebook in the desktop app. So at the moment, I'm in the web app for OneNote. This allows me to open it and edit the notebook in the desktop app. Print allows me to print the uh, the page that I'm working on. Share is, as we've just looked at previously, it allows me to share with people. About gives me some terms and conditions and privacy codes etc and the help is fairly straightforward. Moving across the home ribbon we should all be fairly familiar with that from all of the other office applications, documents, sheets etc. That's pretty stock standard. There are some new ones or some ones that look slightly different. The tag option is a new one. You can give tags to different things within a notebook. So if you are setting up a, uh, a unit of learning for your students, you can highlight and put in tags at different points that people might, uh, your students might need to look at. For example, if you're setting up a unit on uh, Australian history, for example, and part of that is they need to do a, a research project on an event, you can actually tag that particular place in the notebook with project A. If something in particular is critical, whether it's a piece of information, a skill or whatever, you can tag that. So that is a really useful feature, um, especially when you're collaborating with other people as well in developing a notebook. Spelling is fairly straightforward and meeting details. That is a new feature and allows you to incorporate meeting details and use this as a, a, a way of keeping your minutes from your meetings. Along with that, so that's the home tab. So the insert option allows me to insert different types of multimedia. You can see there are a few new ones, file printout, file attachment. Uh, I'll go through those in more depth in a later video, but they are really powerful features, quite useful. I can record audio directly into the notebook. Uh, Symbols is quite standard and there is a new stickers option. The next one across is my view tab. That's fairly straightforward. Not too much has changed there. Class notebook, this is a really useful feature. If you're using this as your uh, program for your teaching, uh, you can actually set your class notebook in here with your role. Uh, you can share this if you're in a job share situation or a team teaching situation, uh, reviewing student work. You can use this as a way of sending out and receiving student work. Um, really powerful options there. The print option, well I think we all know what printing does, that's a fairly straightforward option so I won't worry about that one. Um, there are some options here as well, Microsoft has given some options for professional learning. So the professional development tab has uh, a list of resources for gaining some more learning and the help and feedback is just the stock standard help and feedback feature. Next one across here, so we've looked at print, we've talked about that. This one here allows you to type in what it is you want to do and um, OneNote will bring up some suggestions. So for example, I want to start a new page and you can see that it slowly predicts what you're trying to do and gives you some options to click on to do that. The edit in OneNote, that will actually open the desktop app of OneNote and will open this notebook within the desktop app and give feedback to Microsoft is fairly straightforward. The next section down, this is our working area. So we have our white space. This is where we're going to be doing all of our work and setting everything up. This column here, is our notebook section. So I want you to think of Microsoft OneNote as a, a ring binder, a folder. The notebook is the folder itself. When you set up a section, you are setting up sections the same way as you would as you would use your dividers in a normal ring binder folder. 
So you might have a section for each key learning area, for example, if you're a primary teacher, or if you're a secondary teacher, you might have a, a section for each subject you teach, or each grade level, or each class. And then the pages is what is within that section. So for a stage three notebook, which is what I set up here, I might have a section for history. Within the history section, I will have pages with the various learning content within that. So that's the basic structure and some of the basic features of Microsoft OneNote. We'll start to go through these in more depth in the next ser next set of videos. That's all we have time for in this one. For more helpful videos like this, please head to c21teaching.com.au and click on the FTPL videos link. Otherwise, thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.